What if you created your own shader and have non-standard channels or data or information that needs to come into this program to drive it? For instance, here I have a wear map that tells you how warm the surface should be at different stages of its age. Well, we're going to show you how to create those inside of Substance Painter and export them out using user-defined channels. Now if I select this object in the inspector over here, what you'll notice is that I have a custom shader I created called Standard Wear. Now what makes this shader interesting is that I have reorganized which channels go where in the textures. So for instance, we have our standard albedo one up here, but we also have a metallic occlusion wear and smoothness texture. Now for an artist, it'd be really nice if they could directly paint these properties into their meshes. And we're going to do that using Substance Painter. So here I have an object that I've already created using the old standard pipeline. However, I need to make it now work with my new wear pipeline, or I have additional information that is the wear channel indicating how it should fall apart over time. Now over in the texture set settings panel, I have the different channels that I use, and these should be familiar to you, the base, color, height, roughness, metallic, and normal. We can add existing ones that you're familiar with, such as opacity or emissivity. However, it also allows us to add user defined information. So here you see user zero through user seven. I'm going to add user zero. I'm going to rename that where. But as far as this program is concerned, internally it is filling the slot user zero. So you'll always need to remember that later. You can also change the type of information stored in here. Now this is going to be grayscale information, so I'm going to leave it L32F for now. Now if we take a look at one of our layers, you'll notice that under filter, we also have a where channel as well. Let's go ahead and create a new fill layer. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off all the other information except for where. I'm also going to come up here to material and you'll notice that I can also choose the channel I look at as where. Now by default it's filled in with nothing so let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and uh, make this completely black to start with. Now I'm going to create another fill layer on top of that and for this one I'm going to turn off everything and I'm going to stick inside of the uniform color part of this one of my existing channels that I've already baked. So if we go under textures right here, you'll notice I have ambient occlusion, we have all the other ones such as curvature. And since we're trying to describe the wear of an object over time, the ambient occlusion that is the cracks of it, as well as the curvature, can give us a lot of interesting information without having to actually paint anything ourselves. So let's go ahead and click and drag that over here. And what you'll notice now is that if I put that in my wear channel, it shows up over here. You don't really need to understand how I'm using this over in Unity but the grayscale values are actually going to be used to determine how warm the surface should look. And there's going to be a slider that shows you over time. Actually, why don't we go over there and take a look? So what's happening here is as I move this slider over, it's using this wear map I've created in the grayscale values to determine whether or not that part should look worn or whether or not it should look, well, more new. So what I'm trying to do here is create different grayscale values that indicate how warm the surface is where the dark ones are those that are going to become worn first, and the whiter ones are going to be those that are worn the very last, if at all. Now, that's not very dark, so let's right click on this and add a levels to it. And I'm going to go down here and make sure that I choose not base color, but where. Now we're going to start manipulating these different values to try to push things over so that we can see that kind of affecting more areas. So now those corners and crevices are going to be more affected. Now, of course, if this is the opposite of what you want to do, you could always add a filter to it and then invert it. And now we get the exact opposite. So those corners will be preserved as opposed to everything else. And let's go ahead and add one more layer to this. So we'll go ahead and create another fill layer and turn off everything except for wear. And then we'll make this dark instead. I'm going to go to Smart Masks. And I want something just general across the entire surface. So why don't we go ahead and pick maybe a dust of some sort, dust dirty, and apply that to the object. Now we get these nice little imprints all across a different surface. You notice that it's a range, a continuum of values. So I need some values between just black and just white, or even those grayscale steps. So you might want to blur the entire thing to add some more additional smoothness to the object. We can of course do this by creating another layer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this instead of normal, I'm going to go to pass through. Now with pass through, it's taking all the data below it and passing it through it. Now we can begin manipulating everything that comes out from below it by right clicking on this object. And let's go ahead and add another filter. And let's go to filter and do blur. And you'll notice everything blurs just a little bit. And that's all I want. It's just a tiny bit of blur. Get a few extra values in there. 
Now, of course, we need to get this information out of this object and into Unity or whatever project you're working with in the textures. So we're going to go to File, Export Textures. So when exporting, we're going to need to create our own custom configuration file. So go to Configuration, choose one that makes sense for you. I'm just going to use Unity 5 Standard Metallic. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to change its name to Unity 5 Standard Wear. Now under here, I'm going to make a new output map. We're going to make a grayscale one. I'm going to copy this information from above down here. This is basically saying to use the mesh's name as well as the texture set name over here when exporting these textures out. And then we're going to change this from emission to wear. Now I need to connect the input map to that output slot, that grayscale slot right there. So let's go on down here. And remember, it was originally user zero that we were working with when we set up that channel. Unfortunately, it does not rename that input map to where like we renamed it, but we can go ahead and click and drag this here to gray and choose gray channel. And if we go back to export now and choose our Unity 5 standard where configuration, and we open that up, we'll notice that we now have a where map that's going to be exported. I'm just going to create a temporary folder on my desktop and just call this where test and open that up, hit select and export. Let's go ahead and open that up and take a look at what we have. We have our albedo and transparency, metallic smoothness, normal, and our custom wear map that we can now bring into Unity and use to drive those custom shaders that we created. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you all next time. So long and goodbye.